Okay, thank you all for coming back. What I want to do this time is talk about how to solve linear equations. And I want to talk about that partly because you will want to solve linear equations sometimes, but partly because it's going to give me an opportunity to introduce an algorithm for putting a system of linear equations into a special form, a form called rho reduced echelon form. And this algorithm for putting things into rho reduced echelon form is one we're going to be using over and over through this course for many purposes. So today's purpose is to solve linear equations, but we're going to be using this method over and over again for lots of things. So we want to solve systems of linear equations. So here's a system of linear equations to practice with. So Wanda the witch has three types of pets, cats, ravens, and snakes. She has 10 pets in total with a total of 16 legs and four wings. How many of each type of pet does she own? And in case anyone is unsure, a cat has four legs and no wings. A raven has two legs and two wings. And a snake has no legs and no wings. Okay, so here is our setup. Uh, here is the corresponding system of equations. The total number of pets is 10. So that's why it says here, C plus R plus S is 10. C is the number of cats. R is the number of ravens. S is the number of snakes. Here is that system of equations again. And what we are going to do is we are going to systematically replay, systematically modify these equations while keeping the solutions exactly the same. And I should say at this point that I am not trying to solve this in the fastest possible way. If some of you want to go solve it in the fastest possible way, I'm sure you could be much faster than this. I'm trying to show you a systematic method which will scale up well to large numbers of equations and large numbers of variables. Um, okay, so what I'm going to, but I, yes, you, you definitely could find something faster if you were just trying to be the fastest you could for this problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do is one by one, I'm going to get each variable into just one equation. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the cat variable into its own equation with nothing else. So right now the cats are in two equations, the first one and the second one. I'm going to modify my second equation so it has no cats in it. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take four times the first equation and subtract it off from the second equation. So four times C away from four C, that cancels out the cats. Four times R away from two R, that gives minus two R. Four times S away from zero, that gives minus four S. And four times 10 subtracted from 16, that gives minus 24. So now my second equation has no cats. My cats are only in my first equation. Now I want to get the ravens in an equation by themselves and in a different equation from the cats. So I'm going to get ravens all by themselves in just the second equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is right now, the ravens have a coefficient of minus two. I'm going to you divide my second equation by minus two so that the coefficient of ravens is now one. So minus four divided by minus two, that's where this two comes from. Minus 24 divided by minus two, that's where this 12 comes from. So now my ravens have a coefficient of one in the second equation. And now I'm going to subtract appropriate multiples of the second equation from the first and third equations to remove the ravens from the first and third equation. So I've subtracted the second equation from the first equation, 
and I subtracted twice the second equation from the third equation, and now I, the mavens are only in the second equation. And finally, I want to play the same game with the snakes. So right now, the snakes have a coefficient of minus four. I am going to divide by minus four so that the coefficient becomes one. And then I'm going to subtract appropriate multiples of the third equation from the first and second equations. So now all the cats are in the first equation, all the ravens are in the second equation, all the snakes are in the third equation, and we learn that Wanda has three cats, two ravens, and five snakes. Okay. So normally I would pause longer here to let people look, but you can pause the video. So <clears throat> before going on, I want to introduce a shorthand notation. Very often when we have a system of equations, we don't write the variable names, we don't write the pluses, we don't write the equals, we just write the coefficients. So instead of writing C plus R plus S equals 10, we just write 1, 1, 1, 10. And instead of writing 4C plus 2R equals 16, we write 4, 2, 0, 16. And this vertical bar is to remind us of where the equals were. So I'm going to be using that notation and so will your book lots of times. So I have rewritten at the bottom of the slide the first two steps of what I showed you before. This first step here, I took four times the first equation and subtracted from the second. This second step here, I divided the second equation by negative two, and this dot, dot, dot is to remind you I did lots of stuff after that. So the basic operations we're going to perform is we're going to rescale a row by some constant factor, like when we rescaled this row by a factor of negative two, or negative one half. We're going to subtract a multiple of one row from another, like I subtracted four times this row from this one. And also I didn't use this, but we might sometimes want to reorder the rows. We might want to switch the order of two rows. And notice each of those operations will exactly keep the same the set of solutions to our equations. So our goal is going to be using these operations to make our equations as nice as possible. Now in our example, we made our equations really nice. We just got each variable by itself. C equals three, R equals two, S equals five and so forth. And usually we are not quite going to be able to be that nice, but we're going to be able to be pretty nice. And there's a precise thing that I mean by pretty nice. We are going to be able to put our equations into what is called row reduced echelon form. So I'm going to go to my next slide. My next slide has these same three bullet points at the top. So here is what row reduced echelon form means. Every row, either it's a row of all zeros, like this one and this one, or its first, its leftmost entry is a one, leftmost non-zero entry. So those are shown in boxes in this picture here here, 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 and here. So these boxed entries at the left of the rows are called the pivots. And I want to point out it's only these leftmost ones that are called pivots. This over here is not a pivot. OK. So each row is either all zeros or else its first non-zero entry is a pivot. Secondly, in any column which has a pivot, all the other entries, the non-pivot entries, are zeros. So you look at these columns, these are the pivot columns, they have a single one and everything else is a zero. And then the third condition, which is not as important as the others, but is part of the standard definition, is a condition about what order the rows are in. 
The condition is the, row, the zero rows are at the bottom of the matrix here and here, and the non-zero rows are ordered so that the pivots go from left to right as so we go from top to bottom of the matrix. So that's what we mean by row reduced echelon form. And the fact is that by using our row operations, we can put every matrix into row reduced echelon form. Now let's talk about how we do that. So here is an example matrix. It's a new one. It's not the same one as I had for my previous problem. And I'm going to show you how to put this matrix into row reduced echelon form by doing these basic row operations. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making pivots. So, we're going, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my matrix. I'm going to think, where do I want to make a pivot? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look from left to right at my columns and think, which column do I want to make a pivot in? The first time around, I'm going to choose this first column over here. I'm going to make a pivot in that column. I'm going to choose some non-zero entry to make into a pivot. And that non-zero entry is going to be this three. So that three, I'm going to make into a pivot. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make my three into a one. In order to do that, I'm going to rescale the row that the three is in. So I'm going to take this row, three, six, three, 12. I'm going to divide it by three. And the result is going to be this new row, one, two, one, four. So that was the result of multiplying by one third. Okay, so now I have a nice one. Oops. Now I have a nice one there ready to become a pivot. But to make it a pivot, I have to make all the other entries in that column be zeros. So I'm going to subtract appropriate multiples of the first row from the other rows to make zeros. So to make this zero here, I am going to subtract off the first row. And to make this zero here, I'm going to subtract off twice the first row. And now, I've got a single one here and everything else is a zero. And the one is at the left-hand end of its row. So now I have made a pivot column. Okay, I've made one pivot column, but I need to make more. So I'm going to look across at the other columns to see where I want to make my next one. Um, looking in my second column, here's my second column. My second column would not be a good place to make a pivot column because it's only non-zero entry is in a pivot row, right? The only non-zero entry is, that, is this two and that row already has a pivot. What I want is I want the leftmost column, which is not already a pivot column and which has a non-zero in a non-pivot row. So the second column only has, has its only non-zero entry in a pivot row. But this third column, with this third column, I'm in good shape. This third column has a non-zero entry, which is in a non-pivot row. So I'm going to take that three over there and make that three into my next pivot. In order to do it, I divide this second row by three. So now I have a one over here. And then I subtract appropriate multiples of the second row from the first and third row in order to make all the other entries in that column zero. And now this third column has a nice pivot in it. So I now have two pivot columns and now every row either is a zero row, like on the bottom, or has a pivot. So I have now reached where we do special on four. Okay, uh, you will get chances to practice this on the homework and in your sections. Uh, I'm going to go on very soon. This algorithm will become straightforward to you. Okay, 
So now I have to admit I have swindled you a little. I promised I was going to tell you about solving equations. And what I told you is the first step, which is putting equations into a reduced echelon form. I'm actually going to wait, make you wait for the next video to talk about how you use the row reduced echelon form to say things about the solutions of the equations. Uh, what I'm going to do instead now is pause and make a few other comments about row reduced echelon form. But after this, we'll go to the next video and we'll see how we use this row reduced echelon algorithm to solve systems of linear equations. Okay, vocabulary. I already told you the initial leading ones are called pivots. The columns that contain them are pivot columns. And when we have a system of equations, the corresponding variables will be called pivot variables. Um, this is all very standard. The terminology for the columns or the variables which are not pivot columns or pivot variables is less standard. But the terminology which I like, and I think you'll see pretty soon is a good choice, is to call them free columns or free variables. And in the next talk, you'll see in what sense they are free. Uh, finally, one more piece of vocabulary. The number of pivots is called the rank. So right now, that's just a fact you should memorize because the textbook starts using this vocabulary, so you should know it. But as time goes on, you will see what rank is good for. And when we reach chapter three, we'll be using rank all the time. Uh, two other quick notes. Um, a historical note, the algorithm, or actually a slightly different version of this, al oh, sorry, this algorithm is called the Gauss-Jordan algorithm. Carl Gauss, back in the end of the 18th century, developed a similar algorithm. His goal was that astronomers had observed the asteroid series for a period of about two weeks, and then they had lost it and they couldn't see it in their scopes. So he had this two weeks of data about where Ceres was when, and he was trying to determine the, the orbit of Ceres. And in order to do this, he needed to solve 17 equations and 17 variables. And that's way too big to do in an ad hoc way. If you just start fooling around, subtracting one equation from another, or messing around in what seems nice, you'll find that it's like herding cats and ravens and snakes. But Gauss instead developed this systematic way and he was able to determine the orbit of Ceres and the astronomers were able to find it again. Uh, the exact method we are teaching is not quite Gauss's method. It's the one that was invented by Wilhelm Jordan uh, about, about 80, 90 years later and also by Bernard Clausen who has been cheated by history. Uh, here's the other board point. If you learn a lot about linear algebra, you will learn that there are a lot of standard forms you can put matrices into or put equations into. We, we are doing row reduced echelon form. There's also row echelon form, which actually historically is what Gauss used. There's column echelon form, there's QR decomposition, LR decomposition, tri-diagonal form, UDV factorization. There's just so many. And they're all good for different things. So we are taking the strategy in this course of pretty much teaching you one method, which is row reduced echelon form. Uh, we will get to QR and UDV later in the course, but whenever possible, we're going to use the row reduced form. And that's because teaching you one method keeps the learning contained and reasonable and because it's a pretty good method. But there are lots of other methods and you should not be at all surprised if for some particular problem, you found it easier to use some other method. Um, actually, for the particular example of solving linear equations in row echelon form is more convenient than reduced row echelon form. But there's, there's just lots of them out there. So, okay, what you should do now is go make yourself another cup of tea, take a little stretch, and then let's talk about how we use row reduced echelon form to solve systems of linear equations.